Right? Ouch. This is a regular city council meeting of the city of Ocean Shores. It's March 12th, 2024, and the time is 6 p.m. The meeting is being held at the Ocean Shores Elementary School. The meetings are simulcast and archived on KOSW radio. Meetings are live streamed with closed captioning and may be accessed on the city website under council recordings. The meeting can be viewed on cable channel 68 Thursdays at 12 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. Can we have a roll call, please? Here. Councilmember Taylor? Here. Councilmember Griebel? Here. Councilmember Klein? Here. Councilmember Scott? Here. Councilmember Wills? Here. Councilmember Hart? Here. Tom, can you uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the meeting agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, announcements, uh, board and committee vacancies. We have three vacancies on the planning commission, two vacancies on the parks board, four vacancies on the fresh waterways advisory board, one vacancy on the radio board, and one vacancy on the library board of trustees. Appointments tonight, I would like to uh, appoint uh, Patrick Wendelin to the radio board with council concession. All right, thank you. We have uh, a report from the Library Board of Trustees. That's Jenny Kate. Um, hang on a second. We're a little short on microphones, so bear with us. Uh, it was kind of thrown together at the last minute, so to speak, and uh, Sarah did a great on. job with it. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Jenny Kate, and I am a member of the Ocean Shores Library Board of Trustees. There is a lot going on at the library in April, and I'll start with an afternoon with George Washington. The annual convention of the Washington State Sons of the American Revolution is being held in Ocean Shores from April 22nd to the 28th, which is quite exciting to have such an honor. So on April 25th, from 3.30 to 4.30, actor Vern Fryholm will be portraying George Washington with an authentic, lively, and engaging characterization about the man, his character, his challenges, and events that shaped his life. And refreshments will be served. This free event is being made possible by Friends of the Library. Other events during this Patriot Week include a genealogy cafe, April 23rd from 11 to 3 p.m. You can schedule an appointment with Carrie, who is a genealogist, to gather information about your ancestors. And on April 24th from 12.30 to 1.30, come explore the Patriot chest with a Revolutionary War uniformed soldier. He will show you a Continental uniform jacket, a mop cap, a waistcoat, a shut the box game, spy co coins, quilt flags, and many other things can be found in this chest. On another topic, tax preparation service is still available through April 12th on Thursdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. In celebration of Earth Week, there will be a free plant exchange on April 26th from noon to 3 p.m. Bring a plant, take a plant, and please label your plants. There will be a WSU Extension Master Gardeners of Grays Harbor, Pacific Counties on hand to answer questions on gardening and plant care. The Lego Building Tournament continues for elementary school aged children on April 6th from 1 to 3 p.m. And then Captain Underpants Extravaganza for this same age group is on April 27th from 1 to 2 p.m. Join in for a superhero craft, goofy games, trivia, and more. 
The computer class for April is on Android Phone Basics and will be held April 17th from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Please sign up ahead of time for this class. Art in the library for April is various watercolors and photography scenes from our coast by Susan La Madrid. And the lobby display case will have Dennis Rudolph's railroad memorabilia. Please check out the newsletter on the library website for more information on many activities for the month of April. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. We have a golf course report by Rich Hartman. Hold on. <laughs> Your steps in. <laughs> Did council enjoy reading the financial statements from the golf course? So I'll start with the financial statements. Uh, Mike Fosnick's doing a pretty good job with the forecast uh, for the year. January came in ahead of his forecast. February also technically came in ahead of forecast, meaning we lost less money in February than he expected. So with January's profit and February's loss, we're still ahead of forecast for the year. We're, we've made $5,000 for the year uh, versus his projected of 4,600. Uh, continuing with annual sales of uh, not just memberships, but trail fees and golf, court, golf cart storage. So uh, the new, uh, the new uh, pro, Ronnie Espinal has been in there now six weeks, so uh, he's getting used to corporate life after having been a uh, golf pro in more of a private setting, so things are going well there. Uh, it's allowing Gary Enholm to be on the course more. He's the superintendent of the course, and uh, he's starting to be able to tackle issues out, out there. Uh, during the downtime, they've been working on equipment, and so that's taken a lot of time. Uh, he wants to thank the city uh, administration for helping them. They've had some uh, problem trees, dangerous trees that they've uh, got the city's help with managing. They've had some other uh, acquisition questions on gravel and other products that the city's helped them out with. Um, they are working on fixing the nets in the driving range to help with uh, the repairs that were necessary from uh, fall last year when we had a big windstorm. Uh, they've got their new mower uh, working now. Uh, it, it's dedicated to the greens, so they were allowed, that allowed them to take the last mower and turn it into something called a verde cutter. It helps uh, cut verde. And so <laughs> since it's dedicated, they're uh, able to use that in problem areas where the grass grows more uh, side to side rather than straight up, and uh, I guess that's important. Anyway, they're on that. Uh, they're also working to carry out a plan for the greens and the tee boxes. Uh, there's been years of thatch built up, and they showed me some, some plugs of what they're trying to deal with. So uh, the weather has to get warmer for them to really attack it but uh, with some, uh, some application products and with aerating, they are hoping to attack the green soon and continue to work on getting it in top-notch shelf, top-notch shape. Any other questions? Guess not. Thanks, Rich. Uh, next up, we got uh, public comment. Public comment to council is intended for communication to the city council regarding general council business or policy not on tonight's agenda. Address comments or questions to the city council body, not to an individual member or city staff. Please limit your comments to three minutes. We request that the comments be nice and respectful. This is not a question and answer time and the council cannot engage in conversation with the public. No person may use the public comment for the purpose of campaigning or advertisement. The city council will begin the time once the citizen has started their public comment. At two minutes, you will see a green light.
followed by a yellow light indicating 30 seconds remain of your public comment period. A red light will notify you that your public comment time has ended. Order of public comments will be first, individuals attending in person, second, individuals attending remotely, and third, uh, general public comments, whether in person or remotely, will continue in a usual position on the agenda. So who do we got up first? So good evening. We have uh, eight in-person and one remote comments. And the first one is Lillian Broadbent, Methodology. That'll work, right? I think so. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Lillian Broadbent, and tonight I would like to ask a few questions relevant to the methodology for some of the current projects. Uh, they're not, it's not intuitively obvious, and I don't know that we have a plan in all cases. I've got to get closer. Okay. Um, <laughs> where was I? Uh, one of the things that, that pops up to me that we don't seem to, we're, we're in the process of making lots of little stop signs apparently. And I don't know that, I don't know what the methodology is. Have we done a traffic study? Do we know where they're going? Do we have a plan? Uh, certainly we don't want a traffic stop at every little street, uh, but it appears that we're just proceeding with putting in stop signs. Again, I just like to understand the methodology. I'm not opposed to them, I just would like to understand the methodology. And the same is even more true for this survey that's going out, quasi-vote survey. Uh, I asked Jane, Jane, <laughs> uh, it told me in, in a meeting that we had a week or two ago, that there was going to be one survey for every parcel. Um, because we don't want to do a regular vote, which would be the normal policy, uh, but we want to include some of the campers, or all of the campers. But just by going by parcel, what you're going to include is a whole lot of LLCs, uh, family trusts, all sorts of things that have very little to do with either camping or uh, or our city. And I think that we need to, some thought needs to be put in. If this is going to be used like a vote, only it's a survey, and but everybody gets to participate, whether they have any local interest or not, um, I, th I think we're borrowing trouble. And I would really like to see a little more thought put into it. Thank you. Connie Clifford, Life in Ocean Shores. Connie Clifford, Ocean Shores. Good evening, Council. My wife Judy and I are active in the city community and in the LGBT community. I've never felt discriminated against. I've never felt hate from anyone that I know personally, even though I know there are people in town that hate us just because we're LGBT. I have never felt safer or more a part of any city as I do in Ocean Shores. This is not just my opinion or Judy's opinion. I've had conversations with several other people. We do not like the LGBT community looking like bullies or scared rabbits. We just want to look like part of the city and be liked or disliked for who we are, not what we are. Thank you. Jan Hyatt, Razor Clam Festival. Jan Hyatt, Ocean Shores, uh, good evening. Uh, I just wanted to thank the staff of the convention, uh, community convention for the Razor Clam Festival. I'm, we were there several times. Uh, the people there 
staff and the people visiting, it was amazing, the group going in and out, and it appeared to be no problems. I'm sure that George had a few problems that we don't know about, but I just want to say thank you to them and to the city. Uh, the St. Patty's Day Parade was great, and it was nice to see some of the city and the mayor out there walking and waving at the people. Uh, they enjoyed it. I, we were out there with them, and the people enjoyed it. And I want to thank the city for making that effort to get out, say hi to the people, and uh, let George know that uh, his work was truly appreciated along with what the staff did. Thank you. Nancy Milliman, thank you. Good evening. This April 8th marks 15 months since about 40 residents of Dolphin Avenue Northeast left our meeting with the past mayor and our police chief. The mood was upbeat and we were about 90% sure that the mayor would be proceeding with the installation of some stop signs on Dolphin. Therefore, I am taking this opportunity to thank Mayor Mayor Elgin and Chief Logan for their continued support and as they are able, implementing steps to help our city become safer for residents and visitors alike. For those residents with their safety and traffic concerns, know that our leaders are listening and that it does take time. Those new stop signs in December were 31 months in the making, or at least the ones this April are. Together, we really can make a safer ocean shores. Thank you. Joe DeVore, Duck Lake. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, before I get into my uh, comments about Duck Lake, I just want to thank the city as a whole for um, how accessible and how transparent they truly are. I, I get that feeling every time I prepare to come to a meeting. I, uh, I look at the agenda and the documents that are gonna be used are posted. You allow public comment during this period for anything that we wish, and then on action items for that as well. So even with differences, as long as there's that access and communication and transparency, I think that helps a great deal resolve things. So thank you for that in advance. Now to my point about uh, Duck Lake. I see that on the agenda, Herrera environmental consultants are, are wanting to do a freshwater management plan with the city. And part of the, the scope of work is lake observation to include boats and anglers. And during that period, I would hope that they could look at the area between Albatross and Ocean Lake and look on a weekend during the summer and see what impact it has on the shore, the erosion, uh, damage to docks that these things create, both the speed and the towables. I understand getting from point A to point B, but when you do towables in that section of narrow channel, not channel, it's a lake, but it's more narrow than a lot of rivers are, they get this wash, washing machine effect and it creates erosion, uh, it creates damage to docks, uh, it creates damage to boats that are docked to them. So maybe they could work with the uh, Grace Harbor Conservation District. I know that the city partnered with them last year. Maybe they could share their findings with them and, uh, and see if there is a, um, an objective view on whether these activities in that area creates damage to the uh, ecology, to the erosion, to the damage to boats. Um, other than that, again, I just want to thank the, the city for being receptive to community members. Thank you. James Pace, thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Or is that too quiet? Can we be louder? <laughs> okay. Good evening. Uh, this is the first in-person council meeting that I've ever attended. Uh, however, I do watch the meetings via our local TV station, uh, and that's why I'm here tonight. So I feel that it's important to thank the people of Ocean Shores and the elected leaders uh, for welcoming us to this community. 
Many of you already know my husband, He's the guy over there behind the camera, John Reed. Uh, so we brought our property here roughly 10 years ago, and we actually moved here four years ago. Uh, and we have never regretted that decision coming to Ocean Shores. So like many people that live here, we came from some other place. Um, not to disparage where we moved from, but it was a place that wasn't always welcoming, and especially to anyone who could be viewed as different. So some comments have been made against Ocean Shores and its leaders that this is not a queer-friendly place to live. I absolutely disagree. I feel fortunate to be a member of Ocean Shores community, and when I say that, I mean the entire community, not just the queer community. I love the queer community here, and I love, love, love the entire community here. So as a gay man, I'm here tonight to let my voice be heard. So what I see, I see so many good things happening here. My husband and I have been to all sorts of events. Uh, we've met with our elected leaders and visited many businesses, and we have, never we have never felt discriminated due to our sexuality. I'm not a naive person. I've experienced threats and discrimination. Whoops. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> I'm not a naive person. I've ex I have experienced, um, oh, I'm sorry, guys, threats and discrimination. I know there may be fear or confusion when we encounter people who are different than ourselves, but in my experience, Ocean Shores is a community that strives for acceptance and inclusion. I see people from different backgrounds, often with differing opinions, coming together and engaging one another in healthy, constructive ways to better our community. My husband and I and our children have always been treated with respect, acceptance, and have received nothing but support and encouragement from the community. And many of the residents here have become very good friends to us. So I would like to thank the council for building and maintaining a community that we can all be proud of and that we can all be a part of. I appreciate this council and the people of Ocean Shores who come together to learn, grow from one another, and focus on making this a safe, welcoming place for everyone. Thank you, you guys. Sherry Dooley, no report is unacceptable. Good evening. Um, before I start, I would like to echo what Jan said about the Razor Clam Festival. It was great. We had an awesome time. Loved the vendors and all the displays. We really enjoyed it. Um, I'm here to talk to the council. When you were voted for or appointed to be on city council, one of the things you agreed to was to be a liaison between various city boards and the citizens of Ocean Shores. Since the beginning of 2024, there have been five council meetings. During the January 8th meeting, two council members had no report. January 22nd, one council member had no report. February 13th, three council members had no report. February 27th meeting, one council member had no report, and March 12th, one council member had no report. There is always something to report. If you were unable to attend the meeting, you could say, I was unable to attend the meeting, but I'll watch the recording and I'll give you a report at our next council meeting. Someone else already reported what you wanted to say, you could do like I did. You can reiterate one thing that you took away from that board meeting, or from that board meeting that you're a liaison to. There's no need to give an elaborate account of the meetings. Bullet points are fine. To the council members who are consistent with their reports, thank you. Your commitment does not go unnoticed. Every council member should be reporting something. When it comes time for you to give your liaison report this evening, if you planned on saying no report, I encourage you to think twice and think of something to report. Thank you. 
I believe it's James Sherry, Beach Access after sand removal. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, council members. My name is James Sherry. My wife and I purchased a beachfront property on Ocean Shores Drive uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, we enjoyed walking from the back of our property down to the beach, walking our dogs. Um, we also enjoyed being able to walk down to the public access at Beach Street uh, and, and uh, access the beach there. Sometimes we just made a loop. Um, anyway, it was one of the things that drew us to Ocean Shores when we were looking for a place uh, to purchase a beachfront property. Um, came about well, six weeks ago, I think, whatever it was, we had just gotten back from a trip and I came from Olympia, where we spend most of our time, to Ocean Shores and went down to the beach, or tried to, and discovered that there was an eight foot drop off from the back of, uh, along the beach. Apparently, at least I, I believe what happened was the city or the state or someone came and took sand along um, the dune, and I understand that there was a need for that at Oihut in terms of building a berm and preventing flooding or whatever. I'm not sure what it was, because I was never giving any notice and we didn't see much of a write up about it. But now, um, about two weeks after the first time I noticed that, so we can't access the beach, um, they'd cut it back even further. Now there's about a 12 foot drop off, so we can't access the beach. If we want to get to the beach, we have to go down to the North Jetty or drive up the beach to one of the public drive-in access areas. And of course, that affects our enjoyment of the property and property values, I suspect. Anyway, um, what I'm interested in finding out, and I don't know if there is a plan, but I would like to know if there's a plan to mitigate the issue, uh, whether it's a city, uh, city responsibility or the state or, or whoever took the sand, um, and if there's nothing that's going to be done to mitigate the issue, I'd like to find out if there's anything property owners are allowed to do to help mitigate the issue, because there's a sheer drop of 12 feet. And if you don't know it's there and we're walking down towards the beach at night in the dark, uh, you would end up um, dropping down 12 feet, perhaps on a big a drift log and, and hurting yourself. So, and I also speak for the deer. They used to love to walk down that same path to the beach. Uh, I, I understand they need salt now and again. Anyway, that, that was, I just wanted to avoid uh, that concern because we hadn't heard much about that in advance and uh, kind of only found out about it because happened and wanted to go down to the beach and couldn't get there. Anyway, I appreciate finding out more about that. Thank you. Uh, and then we have one remote public comment, Don Williams, Excess Street Lid Fund. Can you hear me okay? We do. Yeah, I'm having a, uh, am I okay? I'm having a lot of trouble understanding you, but uh, uh, am I on okay? You are on just fine. Okay, thank you. Um, at the March um, 13th town hall meeting, and also at the um, uh, finance committee meeting last March 19th, it was last week, there was mention of a, uh, of the $29 million bond that the city took out about 15 years ago, actually 1911, uh, 2011, to pay the cost of street repairs. Uh, it was just, it was a lid, uh, a lid number, um, I think it was uh, 0701 or 0101. And you may hear a lot about this when the budget starts coming along because um, those bonds, I understand, that bond is gonna be retired early next year. And it's going to create a very large, a fairly large windfall of, uh, of cash to be used in some way. Uh, that bond was used to pay off about a $36 million project in the city on the street. And um, about 20% of the people, uh, every, every lot was assessed. Every property owner was assessed their share of that, uh, of that $36 million cost. And about 20% of the property owners paid off immediately. And the remaining people got involved in the bond which amounted to $29 million, and that's going to be retired next year. 
The point that I want to make is that uh, because this is the last lid of several, there's going to be other funds being retired also that were used to uh, support and back up the city's uh, lid program. And I want to say that I uh, say to you that uh, that money really belongs to the people that paid it. Um, it's, the money exists because the bonds were paid off early. And uh, I don't know how much it's going to be, but when it comes time for the budget, if it's all possible, I, I don't know what the legal issues are, but if it's at all possible, whatever money becomes available from closing down the fund, uh, fund number, I think it's 214, and several other funds involving LIDs is going to become available, and that money should be that money belongs to the people that overpaid, and it should be returned to them rather than diverted to some other city project. So when it comes time for the budget in a month or two or three, two or three months, please uh, consider that. Thank you. That concludes public comment for this evening. It's back to me. So next we have uh, staff reports. Uh, first report, um, City Administrator, Scott Anderson. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, citizens. Um, if you were, you're going to hear, I've heard a couple of these if you were at the Public Works Committee meeting, uh, but for those who weren't, I'm going to just go over them again briefly, not everything, but some of it. Uh, the first one, uh, erosion at the south end. Um, erosion mitigation was done on the sand berm on February 12th, February 13th, and then supplemental work was done over the past two weeks, although not this week. Uh, to date, the city has spent about $155,000 on the berm, but not all of our purchase orders have been paid and finalized from the street department. So we're anticipating that final costs will come in at somewhere around $220,000. That's nearly half of the $500,000 that the City Council set aside for erosion. However, the City is in line for a reimbursement, a potential reimbursement, of $127,000 as the State of Washington has recognized the emergency for Grays Harbor. Governor Jay Inslee issued an emergency proclamation related to extreme weather uh, in January and he signed that on March 15th. Uh, the proclamation pertains to Grays Harbor County as storms here cause significant coastal flooding and erosion throughout the county, uh, and it passed the $30 million threshold uh, that is necessary to declare it an emergency. So the Washington State Department of Emergency Management, the Emergency Operations Center are, in, are going to response so we can submit those receipts. Uh, the, hopefully the city will get that $127,000 back, uh, and the city also hopes this will be the last work on the storm uh, for this season uh, as the storm season is coming to an end. I will let you know that we are looking at some alternatives uh, for erosion mitigation, um, but we will come to that when we will announce sort of publicly what we're looking at when we have a little more information ourselves. Um, some A lot of events that are coming up, uh, Jenny Kate mentioned part of it at the library board, but it is going to be Patriot Week shortly. Uh, at the next city council meeting, I will have a lengthy and detailed uh, report on what that's going to entail for the city, but there's going to be a lot of great events. Um, but one of them I'll announce tonight, and that's that the city will be working with volunteers starting on April 1st to install the new pocket park at the entrance of the High Dunes Trail. Uh, the park is expected to open on April 24th with a dedicated by the Sons of the American Revolution, uh, presenting a bench at the park and dedicating it to our veterans. Uh, the park will be a three-tiered level park with um, uh, the Razor Clam sculpture and the memorial bench, and we hope to serve as sort of the official access point uh, for the city's beaches right there on Chance Alamere. Uh, and in addition to that, we will be adding a sidewalk connection at the Shiloh Inn. Um, for those of you who no noticed when we walked the Dune Trail, there's a sidewalk that sort of dies just before you get there. Um, that is going to be, uh, the city is working with Simmons and Sons Construction to finalize that, and we hope to have that finalized by the 24th as well, so that everyone will have access to the park uh, and everyone will be able to enjoy the High Dunes Trail. Regards to Chinook Playground update, the equipment, uh, there is a bid out for Chinook Park to have their new sidewalk installed prior to building the playground there. Uh, the work for the sidewalk is being bid. We hope to have everything completed by May 15th. Uh, the sidewalk will make the playground a ADA accessible and will allow people to get to the ADA accessible swing that will be there. Uh, we're working with the playground manufacturer uh, to get everything done and we'll be working with volunteers to help build the playground equipment. Uh, and and there will also be a fence that will be built that will run along the entire road of Duck Lake Drive to prevent children and or pets that get out of the dog park from running out into the road uh, and just make the city safer. So we look forward to that. Um, 
This is a larger one, and I'm gonna I'll, I'll make it short, but it's a very important one. It's about the North Jetty update and the North Jetty repairs, and I just want people to understand what is happening with that. So the U.S. Army Corps in the Port of Grays Harbor received approximately $14.6 million, um, three million through the bipartisan infrastructure, or sorry, three million through an appropriation and about 10, almost $11 million from the bipartisan infrastructure law. And the overall scope of this project is to restore the 7,500 feet at the North Jetty, including repair, repairing damaged sections and bringing the crest height of the jetty to 23 feet, which is the highest it ever was. The project is estimated to take up to 2.5 years and will A, um, serve as a nav help the navigation for the harbor, but B, it will protect some of our vital infrastructure down there, including our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers is working to get this project started, um, but there are a number of elements that remain Maine. Um, they hope to, oh, they were hoping to award in a bid this year, but it's looking like because of the permitting, the environmental plans, and the specifications, that uh, the estimated start of solicitation will be May, June of 2025, and the contractor will start work somewhere in July of 25, and it's estimated that it will take approximately two years to complete the Empire project. So hopefully the entire North Jetty will be repaired somewhere by October of 2027. Spring cleanup is once again upon us. April 24th, the 28th, it is coming. Uh, this is an extremely popular event at the city, and we are doing it at the way we did it last year down at Ocean Lake Way. Signs will be posted how to get it. Uh, it's intended for individual property owners, not commercial dumping. Um, and there are rules and restrictions for what you can bring. You can find all of those online, or if you have any additional questions, feel free to call me, and I can try to answer those to the best of my ability. If you want to schedule a home pickup, uh, and this is for people who really cannot get out of their home or they have mobility issues, um, you can call 360-289-2824, and this will be put online to schedule a home pickup um, in either the Public Works Street Department or the Defenders of the Coast, depending on how we end up organizing this, will kindly come to your house and help you with that process. Uh, but we do know that there are people that can, just can't get move these things around themselves, and the city and Defenders of the Coast are here to help in any way we possibly can. And then lastly tonight, uh, the fire department's been extremely busy. Uh, it's responded to 622 calls for service since January 1st, and they wish to announce that the Ocean Shores Firefighter, Fighter Fighters Association and the IGA are having their big annual Easter egg hunt. It will be on March 31st at one o'clock at this very location, the Ocean Shores Elementary School, and kids of our ages are encouraged to attend. And that concludes the report for this evening. All right, thanks, Scott. So next up is council liaison reports and committee reports. Denise, would you like to start us off? There we go, we're green. Uh, I, I signed warrants and today I uh, attended the radio board and uh, two things I wanted to call out there. One is that there had been some complaints uh, about the coverage with the switch to the new frequency. However, uh, they have made some adjustments and have done tests around the city and uh, it looks like the signal is uh, more reliable and consistent. And that of course is uh, 88.9, the new frequency. Uh, the other thing is that the radio board is inviting, they said that they have invited council in the past to come and talk with them, and no one has taken them up on that. So I am extending that invitation one more time on behalf of uh, KSOW for all of you to come and speak with them. All right, thanks. Rich? So I, taking to heart Ms. Dooley's comment about council liaison reports, I'm probably as guilty as anybody about not reporting on all the things that I think I'm doing, but at the same point, I feel like I'm supposed to do those behind the scenes. I talk to so many of you weekly, sometimes daily, about all kinds of different things, and uh, I don't share everything. 
I don't know if that's good or bad, but some things that, that I'm working on, obviously I'm on, I was on agenda setting. Uh, I am on LTAC and I've been working with the LTAC committee for a few weeks now trying to get a better system in place that's going to be easier for all of the LTAC members and the applicants to get through the process. Uh, staff is tired of me calling them on all my questions and the legal hoops I have to go through to, to do it the way I think we should. Um, obviously countless phone calls back and forth with the golf course over all kinds of crazy things. It's just uh, communication and my ability to get them to the right person in the city and then all of a sudden everything's great. Um, talking to the mayor and to Grays Harbor Hospital District directors weekly about maybe our complaints and trying to keep the pressure on them. I, I don't tell you that I'm doing that, but I, but I am. That's why you elected me to do my job and a lot of it is behind the scenes. Um, we got citizens working on Wayfair signs. We're working on it. I'm not even doing anything, they are, but I'm helping a little bit coordinate things, right? So I've got lots of things I do. I'm as bad as anybody about not reporting them. I apologize. I just hope that you guys trust me that I am doing my job and I can do it from anywhere and I do do it from anywhere all the time. And uh, there's more things, but it's somebody else's turn. <laughs> all right, thanks, Rich. Allison. I attended agenda setting and I did attend the public works committee meeting and thank you Scott for giving all the, the great details that you did of everything that was discussed. I'm not going to repeat everything Scott just said. Um, I'm working with the ad hoc committee on council guidelines and we are in the process of getting our first group meeting set up. So we'll be meeting in person and Sarah's working on dates and time so we can get started. She's gotten us lots of great information and examples from other cities and what they have so we have our homework to do before we meet and that's a whole lot of reading and highlighting so that we can look at all that information and put together something that we feel is going to work great for Ocean Shores. All right, thanks Sorry. Lisa. Okay, so I attended the public works meeting as well, and uh, I'll pick one thing, but Scott went through all of them, and that was I'm really excited that the sidewalk connection is going in from the Shiloh to the um, to the new walkway, uh, the High Dunes Trail, sorry, brain freeze. Um, to me, that is an, a vital link, especially for a lot of our disabled visitors and residents who want to access that but haven't really haven't been able to, and also the three tiered park. Um, that's going to be a really exciting addition to the trail. There was a lot of information Scott touched about the North Jetty and that's just exciting that the port in partnership um, with the Army Corps got the funding to do that. It's a little bit later than what we'd like but it's getting done and that's going to protect our infrastructure as well as our residents. So those are exciting things. Okay, so I attended, I attended Council of Governments and I have to apologize because I packed my notes and I don't have them but we meet once a month and there was some great information so what I'll do at the next council meeting since the next one's not until April I will bring that and I will read those notes there is some uh, updates on construction that's going to be happening this summer on 109 um, and it's going to be taking place over several years some of it is between Hoquiam and Ocean Shores and then the remainder is going to be between Ocean Shores on up north past Seabrook um, they're going to be doing their fish, the fish barrier removals is what it is. So there will going to be some detours, but they promised that all of the work was going to be done before the 4th of July. So I'll come back. I'll give you the link for that information. So with the wash dot and I'll get that to Sarah and she could put it on the website. Um, I signed warrants and I also attended agenda setting. And then besides that, probably Sarah and the mayor are sick of me. We probably communicate on a daily basis basis so there you go <laughs> all right thanks Tom <laughs> there you go. okay okay all righty 
I'm the one of the guilty ones of not saying a lot. But I attended the Public Works Committee and uh, also the Finance uh, Committee and sat through the um, Finance Committee where they showed us how to work and use the online for everybody in this town to look and see what our finances are like, what we're doing with them, what we're not doing with them, and um, as the person who has to follow this man with all the information that we sat together and listened to, um, I'm probably the least ones that like to talk anyway, but uh, that's what I did, and um, if anybody has questions, they can always get me after this and I can talk to you like that, okay? So, uh, it's my, my turn. The mic's getting back to me. The mic, okay. Richard. Thank, thank you. So, am I loud enough? Can you all hear me? Yes, thumbs up, no? No, How, how's this? So, um, a, th a thing that I think is important to say is I'm on several liaison committees and too loud? Get closer. Closer. So for me it's booming, but that's my hearing aids. Thank you. So I attend several, I am a liaison on several committees. They don't always meet in the interim between the council meetings. So sometimes I don't have anything to report because there was no committee meeting. However, this time the Parks Board had a meeting on the 13th and they canceled, so I'd still have nothing to say this meeting, except that I did attend the town hall meeting, and I want to commend Angela on what a great job she did on explaining the new Go, uh, ClearGov document uh, uh, process. If you haven't looked, it's easily accessible through the city's website, and it makes looking at the financial documents much, much simpler than the old system. So that's all I have, thank you. All right, Lisa, you're next. All right, just a reminder that the library board meets every other month, so they don't meet once a month. But their next meeting is April 10th, my birthday, at 3 p.m. And they wanted to make sure, even though they're not meeting, to remind everybody that they are looking for a new library board member. So they're hoping people apply and applications close on Friday, May 29th. All right, thanks. Next up is the mayor's report. Uh, I want to let everybody know that the council um, retreat has been canceled for Saturday, and uh, we're going to have a town hall from 12 to, we got the room until 2, but I don't know if it'll take that long. But what we're going to be discussing, and because this had just come in and we've got to make some decisions, the city does, we're going to have a, a town hall about spraying and harvesting in our fresh waterways. We have the pricing for all of that. I thought it was important that we go over that with the public and they know what we're looking at and they can let us know how they feel about it and uh, we can move forward with that. But we just got the pricing in, what was it two days ago? Yeah, on that. So um, we'll be having that this Saturday, 12, 12 to two at the convention center. So I hope everybody turns out for that. I wanna hear what everybody thinks about that. Uh, the drinking water testing for the black slime has started with uh, Robinson and Noble and uh, yesterday was their first day. So they're going around to different homes that have had a problem. And uh, our project manager has a list of those. So she's uh, steering that um, project. Um, I have a meeting with Tom Jensen, the CEO of Harbor Regional Health to discuss medical clinic here in Ocean Shores this Thursday. So uh, we are moving forward on trying to get to a clinic in here for everybody on that. We're adding stop signs to try to slow the traffic on Dolphin and Piranha and also uh, Canal and Perch and Canal and Albatross. We'll have four-way stops on that. Try to slow things down for the people that live on that street and try to walk their dogs and, and such. People aren't too mindful of the 25 mile an hour speed limit, unfortunately. Uh, the vertical evacuation tower, that is being budgeted right now by an engineering firm that we've had working on that. The cost estimates should be in in a couple of weeks. And so we'll know uh, what we need to do to build that for the money that uh, we've been given from FEMA. 
So uh, also, uh, we're in the process of writing two ordinances. We should have those ready to come to the next council meeting. Um, one of them is we want to keep the majority of our traffic fines. Right now, we don't get that opportunity, so we want to capture that money so we can use that to, to help out with traffic. And also, we are rewriting the trapping ordinance. So both of those uh, should be coming up uh, next uh, meeting on that. We've got uh, motor, motor oil recycling will be available soon in the public works yard. Um, we've got uh, that probably will be set up here in the next few weeks. We've been working with the county on that. We had that service behind the bowling alley for quite a few years and it's been gone for a while and it's been a concern of mine that I don't know where this oil is going that used to go into that container because a lot of times I went there to dump my motor oil and the thing was full so it seemed to be a popular item here in town so we got that coming back and uh, hopefully the oil motor oil will be deposited where it needs to be um, and not uh, in the neighbor's yard or something. I don't, I don't know if that's going on, but I'm worried about that anyway. Um, and then we need volunteers for the dog kennel. Um, we need uh, people to help with the dogs, um, take them out, walk them, feed them, you know, clean up after them. And we also really need some foster homes. And so we would love to have some people volunteer that could be uh, a foster home for the dogs. The kennels aren't the biggest and uh, dogs do much better in a home environment than they do uh, in the kennels there. And if you're interested in doing that, contact our police department. Um, they'll take your uh, information and uh, there's a process that you have to go through with some background checks and such, but they can take care of all that and explain that to you. So I hope that um, people uh, sign up and help out with that. We, we really do need to help and we've had some wonderful dogs in there, just sweethearted dogs and it's sad to see them um, have to spend too much time in those cages, you know, and so we'd like to see uh, foster homes available for them on that. And uh, I think that concludes my report. We've got a consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. All right, so next up is old business. And this is the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Ocean Shores, Washington, establishing chapter 2.59 of the Ocean Shores Municipal Code relating to standing committees. And this was brought on by the City Council, wanted to see some updates to the descriptions of the Finance and Public Works Committee, along with a few housekeeping items. And this information has uh, been updated as requested by the Council. So do we have any uh, public comment? Okay, uh, council questions, discussion? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to approve the ordinance of the City Council of the City of Ocean Shores, Washington, establishing chapter 2.59 of the Ocean Shores Municipal Code relating to standing committees. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Next up, uh, we have uh, new business that's presented by our city administrator, Scott Anderson. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I know, sorry. We'll figure it out for the end of the meeting. <laughs> so. Okay, this is a request to the city council, uh, the a request to the city council of Ocean Shores, Washington, to award the Fresh Waterways Management Plan contract to Herrera Environmental Consultants. And uh, so, background before I turn this over to our, our expert, who should be on the phone, Tim Clark, uh, the city council approved a budget of one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars for a Fresh Waterways Management Plan in December of two thousand two. Um, there was some dispute as to what to call this. And keep in mind, there's a number of different plans that have gone around. And so some people were confused. There's the IAVMP, there's the spraying and the harvesting that we're doing. Um, and then this was originally kind of built in, people had the idea it was going to be also our stormwater plan, but it's not our, our stormwater plan. This is just a fresh waterways management plan. Uh, and this is really what, that's really what council wanted to see happen. Um, we had two bids on it or two statements of qualifications, I should say, I'm sorry. Uh, Herrera Environmental 
environmental consultants and DUDEC. They provided their statements of qualifications. Uh, we scored those and Herrera won. We thought they had a sort of superior proposal and then they went out and they bid on it uh, and their budget proposal was $165,000. It's being paid for out of fund 438, the storm drain fund. The bars number is available and you can see this actually breaks down the Herrera uh, statement of qualifications and then as you go through it, you will also see the scope of work and they have several items that are listed that start with the number one, uh, the project management. But if Tim Clark is on the phone, I will let him, our expert, walk through that with you uh, so that way when it comes to public comment, uh, if we have any on that, he can assist. Tim, <laughs> can you hear Hi, me? Hi, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I hear you perfectly, oddly enough, under the circumstances. <laughs> Sorry? No, we hear you. Okay. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity to share about our proposal uh, for our approach for uh, developing a management plan for the fresh waterways of ocean shores. Um, I won't go deeply into the details. We have the uh, materials um, shared with you, but ultimately our goal here is to work with the uh, community and government of Ocean Shores to develop uh, a management plan that caters to the uh, needs and desires of it. And so, you know, one of the first efforts we want to be looking at is really developing specific goals and objectives for what are we trying to achieve with this management plan and as Scott alluded to it's kind of back and forth of what what are these goals and so one of the first things we want to do and that's outlined under our task to here is to host several uh, meetings to describe and, and work with and facilitate uh, the development of those goals and objectives. Um, uh, I heard a public comment earlier on the, about concerns on erosion, and so that um, is important for us to elevate and can help inform what kind of monitoring we will be doing. Um, traditionally, we really focus on algae and cyanobacteria blooms. The blue-green algae blooms have produced types of toxins in our management plans, but also we can really consider these different erosive impacts, as well as considering the balancing act of uh, the algae and the invasive uh, aquatic plants. And so we want to be able to really understand what are the community's concerns and the government's concerns for the fresh waterways. And I understand that it's going to be maybe pretty unique for each of the different unique waterways within ocean shores. Um, it is a um, really interesting maze of canals. I've really enjoyed sort of piecing my way through it and trying to understand what flows into what. And I think that's going to be really important for us to understand is where are the uh, places concerned. So I'm very excited to um, start off with that engagement. And then moving on, based off of those findings, we would move into doing some uh, actual water quality monitoring um, to help understand uh, some of those data gaps that exist. Um, I, there has been limited water quality monitoring that I'm aware of um, since uh, some work that was done in the 1990s, and so we would want to come back in and update uh, some of those data sets so that we can make sure we're making science-based science management uh, recommendations. And then ultimately, we want to compile this into a plan and identify those management um, actions to help meet the goals that were developed um, early on in this uh, plan formation. Um, so that's kind of, uh, that. that's it at a high level um, and happy to answer more questions in the details around that, um, but I want to respect your all time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, do we have any public comment? Yes, Joe. Hi again, my name is Joe DeVore. I just want to restate my concerns about that stretch between Albatross Bridge and Ocean Lake Bridge. Um, 
if part of the, the scope is to do lake observations of boat operation, I would hope that the council and the, and the company could look at that and see what kind of impacts those wakes are creating um, on property, the ecology, the erosion, any kind of damage along those lines. Thank you. All right, thank you. Do you have any other uh, public comments? We do have one online. <laughs> All right, Don? Yeah, are you calling tonight? I can barely understand what's going on, but uh, am I okay now? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay, thank you very much. I looked at the plan, uh, the uh, information provided in the packet, and uh, I think uh, Mr. Anderson uh, explained that this is a uh, it's only a freshwater management plan, and apparently it's it's going to be integrated somehow into a much larger scope of something that's called a lake and a lake and uh, watershed master plan. And I just wonder how that's going to be done. The reason I'm asking is, although this project is budgeted for $165,000, the virus code that uh, Mr. Anderson referred to has actually got a, a budget of $220,000. So I'm wondering what is going to be done with the extra $55,000? I think I hope somebody on the council will ask that question. And how does this plan uh, finally be integrated in with this larger scope called the Lake and Watershed Master Plan? My second question is, although it's not mentioned anywhere uh, easily read, on page 35, uh, this, this contract with the consultant uh, here um, also includes a, a, uh, a, uh, a fresh waterways, uh, or actually a, a uh, storm drain uh, cost rate study. Uh, and it's going to be, if you read the information, it's going to be quite detailed involving staffing plans uh, and capital costs and things to be done. And that plan is due in the middle of next of next year. Uh, so I'm wondering that with the uh, the lack of information provided for the rate study, what has to be done? How is that going to be inter integrated in? And uh, uh, and uh, and also, uh, uh, what options are being assumed for various possible ways the rate study could be configured? Right now, it, it, it doesn't say anything in the contract about what the rate study is supposed to be doing, other than looking at the capital and staffing plans. But without having the complete lake and watershed master plan, I'd like to know how you would plan to do a, a, a rate study without having a complete plan. And what is that extra $55,000 used for? Hopefully somebody on the council will be interested enough in the budget to ask those questions. And thank you very much. All right, thanks. Uh, that was our only online, right? Okay, so council, any uh, discussion, questions? Yes, Lisa. Sorry, I stole the microphone, Matt Allison. <laughs> um, under the stormwater utility rate staffing, the first part of that, the project team will provide the stormwater utility rate and staffing study. The utility rate task will define the total amount of revenue needed on an annual basis to meet the utility's financial obligations, including capital, staffing, operating, and policy-driven commitments, and will present this at a, as a rate. So that will be looked at as part of this. I just turned myself off. I apologize. Um, we are looking at, a, looking at that as part of this, but realize that additional measures will be ongoing when it comes to this because our fresh waterways are definitely part of our stormwater. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Anybody else have anything? All right. Okay, then I would like to make a motion to approve a request of the City Council of the City of Ocean Shores to award the Fresh Water Waste Management Plan contract to Herrera Environmental Consultants. Second. Any more discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. We don't have any discussion items today. No uh, executive session. Agenda review will be Thursday, March 28th, this Thursday, 9 a.m. via Zoom. And that'll be Council Member Scott, Wills, and Hartman on that. So we have a uh, good of the order. Lisa would, Griebel, would you like to go? Thank you. 
I'd just like to remind our community that I have um, a meeting with our community every Sunday, 2.30, in the library meeting room at the Ocean Shores Public Library. We are not meeting this Sunday, March 31st, because it's spring break. So if you want to come and have a chat with me or perhaps some other council members, we will see you April 7th, Sunday, April 7th, 2.30. also like to give a thanks to uh, Jane Shattuck, who has been working behind the scenes on the dog kennel. And Mayor Eldwin mentioned the need for volunteers. I volunteer there, and it's a great, very fulfilling um, task to do. And also just encourage you, if you want to become a foster home, it makes a huge difference. Uh, my husband and I adopted. We fostered a dog from the dog kennel that had been there a very long time. And it's been, she's a great dog. We love her, and I want to apologize apologize to all my neighbors because because of a long time in the dog kettle, she does have a lot of issues. So if it really prevents that from happening if people open their homes and their hearts and can foster a dog from the dog kennel. So I encourage everyone to do that, and thanks again to Jane for spearheading that. All right, Richard. Thank you. We live in a great community, and I'm grateful to be a part of this community and just want to give thanks to all of the residents who live and work and play in this community. Thank you. Tom. On a second on the fostering, anybody who can, uh, it is great uh, being the animal control for Holquiam. The longer a dog stays in the kennel, the more they need to be out of that kennel. Um, so anybody who does that, um, you are in my heart and thank you. Um, so um, I just want to reiterate it. That's, it's a lot of work for the volunteers to take care of those dogs because I have two puppies who are less than, well, they turn a week old today. They was born in my kennel. Thank you. Lisa. So I just want to give a big shout out to staff for the Razor Clam um, Festival. We got TV coverage this year. It was incredible. The convention center staff, Allison and her volunteers, did a phenomenal job. And that was a, a very successful event, especially with the St. Patty's Day Parade. I'd like to also give out a shout to Defenders of the Coast for keeping our um, sides of the roads clean. It's been really nice to see people out there picking up litter. And I plan to get my butt out there soon um, so I just really thank you for that and then the mayor mentioned we are going to be canceling the council retreat on Saturday part of the re the big part of the retreat we were going to be going over the capital facilities plan which we do have but staff is still going through it and I think for us to be successful as council members to help set those priorities we first need to hear from the staff as well as the mayor and to see what are what are their priorities because because we can say one thing when something else might be much much needed somewhere else. So um, we're going to postpone that and we'll let everybody know when we're going to meet again. We will be starting in April though. We will be having council chats at the, uh, at the convention center where um, everybody on council is invited to attend and it's going to be kind of like public comment but back and forth with us. So we'll do our best to all be there when we can. Obviously not everybody will because some people travel and work and vacations and everything else, but we do plan on doing that. And then I hope to see everybody on Saturday for the town hall. Allison. A uh, huge shout out to the staff at the convention center. Razor Clam was a huge success. I don't think I got a chance to get up from the table selling passports from the time we opened the doors until we locked them up at night. Um, I want to give a special thank you to our volunteers, Sarah, Carla, Catherine, Susan, and Gina. Gina was there all day Friday, Friday night, all day Saturday, Saturday night, making sure that our dining area was nice and clean and people had everything they need. Sarah was serving up chowder. Carla was helping me sell uh, passports. And Susan and Catherine helped Gina in the dining area. And that was a lot of work. And I really appreciate all that you guys did. So thank you. Rich.
I have nothing. <laughs> Denise. Uh, the, the new uh, Ocean Shores Community Engagement Committee uh, now has a Facebook group, so I wanted to uh, compliment Kim Nichols for starting that. It's only been up a couple of weeks, and there are already 159 members to that, and it is dedicated to bringing our community together. So uh, a, a nice, positive Facebook group that will list events, so a compliment to her. Uh, I am not a liaison, but I attended the airport advisory committee, so I wanted to tell people to save the date of August 24th. It will be airport appreciation days, and it, it's still, why are you laughing, Rich? <laughs> Our airport is important. Free food. Yes, there will be free food. That well, I don't know if it's free. There will. Well, let me correct that. It will. There will be food, most likely for sale. Yes, August 24. Yes. So I know there's a lot happening during the the summer. All right. Thanks. I, I do want to thank Sarah and Nicole and Chief Logan. They did all this set up here with the help from a staff member from the school, and I don't know his name, but what's it? Brandon. Brandon did a great job uh, getting this all put together, and it wasn't easy. Nothing was set up at like four o'clock when they came in here. So um, I just want to thank them for setting this up so we could keep our meetings on schedule and I appreciate them. Now I need uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. We're adjourned.